27 years after the final Beatles single comes the Beatles' final single. After an exhausting wait, Now and Then will be released on Thursday, November the 2nd. But what's the real story behind this song and why has it taken so long to come out? I'm Andrew from Parlogram and welcome to the story of Now and Then. The announcement on October the 26th about the release of Now and Then was one of the most anticipated events since the release of Free as a Bird in 1995. And its release on November the 2nd brings us to the end of a very long road for this song, one which began over 40 years ago. Although John Lennon had effectively retired from the music business in 1975, he never stopped making music, and during the period between 1975 and 1980, recorded a number of demos at his home in the Dakota. These demos would often feature himself singing to his own piano accompaniment, which he would record on his Sony CF580 cassette recorder, positioned on the top of his piano. Now you may be forgiven for assuming, given the later issues with the recordings, that this was a cheap low-end boombox. But the CF580, introduced in 1976, was Sony's flagship cassette recorder. Priced at $400, it was a very expensive model especially considering the average household monthly income in the US at that time was about $1,000. Although it had external left and right microphone inputs available on the front, John's recordings were made using the machine's two built-in condenser microphones. The cable going into John's machine here appears to be in the headphone socket. Among the demos he recorded on that machine between 1977 and 1979 were Free as a Bird, Real Love, and an apologetic love song called Now and Then, which was also known as I Don't Want to Lose You or Miss You. Now those demos have been known to collectors for many years, as some were broadcast publicly on a radio series called The Lost Lennon Tapes on the Westwood One radio network from 1988 to 1992, and were officially released on the 1998 John Lennon Anthology box set. Paul McCartney had also heard those tracks, along with other bits and pieces of John's songs Yoko had tucked away in her archive, which gave him an idea. So on New Year's Day 1994, Paul telephoned Yoko to ask if he could have access to some of them and explained his plan to complete the recordings himself, hopefully with the help of George and Ringo. Yoko agreed, and on January the 19th 1994, on the occasion of John's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York, she gave him a big hug and handed him a cassette or cassettes containing four songs. Those songs were Free as a Bird, Real Love, Grow Old with Me, and Now and Then. From the four songs, three, Free as a Bird, Real Love and Now and Then, were chosen to work on. Grow Old with Me was abandoned early on, as being too maudlin, even for Paul. With George and Ringo on board, Paul, at the insistence of George, got ELO frontman Jeff Lynne in as producer, who along with Paul's trusted engineer Jeff Emmerich, assembled at Paul's Hog Hill Mill recording studio on February the 11th, 1994, and over the course of that month, completed the recording of the first reunion song, Free as a Bird. A year later, in February 1995, they reunited once again at Paul's to record two further tracks, Now and Then and Real Love. Now, because of the way John had recorded them on that Sony recorder, both his vocal and piano, apart from being fairly low fidelity, were locked in together. And whereas today, AI can and has been used to separate those elements, Getting a satisfactory result using 1990s technology was virtually impossible. And despite the best efforts of Jeff Lynne and Jeff Emmerich, they struggled to get a satisfactory result. Apart from it being lyrically incomplete, one of the biggest issues with the original demo, which Jeff Lynne hadn't been able to resolve, was a persistent 60-cycle mains hum which ran throughout the track. But despite those issues, Paul, George and Ringo got their heads down and laid down a basic backing track consisting of a bass part from Paul, Ringo's drums, and a rhythm guitar part from George. 
However, George became frustrated by the track's technical issues and calling it f***ing rubbish, downed tools and refused to take any further part in it. Touchingly, as part of the promotion for Now and Then, Olivia Harrison said that if he were here today, Danny and her know he would have wholeheartedly joined Paul and Ringo in completing the recording of Now and Then. But being a democratic outfit and following the Beatle rule that if one of them didn't agree, they wouldn't do it, they put it aside and moved on to the next song, Real Love, which George liked a lot more and which they managed to complete to everyone's satisfaction. But despite George's roasting of Now and Then, Paul, even back then, was confident he could bring George round and get everyone back into the studio to complete it at a later date. But as we know, that wasn't to be. All of this recording was of course going on amid much secrecy, and it wasn't until October 1995 that the world got its first look at the reunion it thought it would never see. After Free as a Bird on Anthology 1 and Real Love on Anthology 2, Everyone expected Anthology 3 to include a third reunion single, and its absence from that release was noted in this article published in the Sunday Telegraph, dated October the 27th, 1996, the day before the release of Anthology 3. Titled Reunited Beatles' Abandoned Christmas Single, the writer said that the reason for the song's absence was that they didn't want to repeat the embarrassment of 1995, when Free as a Bird had stalled at number two in the UK chart. Now, of course, that wasn't the real reason, but there was an element of truth in it. For despite having taken the extra precaution of delaying Anthology's release for a week, so as not to clash with Granny's favourite crooning duo, Robson and Jerome, EMI had failed to notice the upcoming Earth Song single by Paul McCartney's nemesis, Michael Jackson. Despite selling 120,000 copies in its first week, Earth Song completely outsold Free as a Bird and stayed at number one in the UK for six weeks, despite receiving 500 radio plays in four days, heard by 43 million people nationwide. Neither Free as a Bird or the first anthology album managed to top the UK charts, where it was outsold by the biggest selling album of the year, a debut long player by Robson and Jerome. In the US, however, Record buyers treated Anthology as an expensive single, and the album shot to number one within the first week, with sales of 855,000. In the article, a spokesman for the Beatles brushed off the disappointment about the previous year's situation and responded that they had been unconcerned about missing out on last year's Christmas number one. The article also reports that Paul Berger, UK chairman of Jackson's record company Sony, mocked EMI by sending his counterpart a turkey with a Beatles single stuffed up its nether regions. It was just Sony's delightful way of saying free as a bird was a turkey. But the Beatles' ex-press officer and ex-head of Apple, Derek Taylor, couldn't hide his disappointment and he said that he would have liked the Beatles to put out Now and Then or pick a track from the Anthology 3 album. As it was, Now and Then's place on Anthology 3 ended up being taken by a pretty but lightweight George Martin instrumental called A Beginning, which had originally been recorded during the White Album sessions as an introduction to Ringo's song Don't Pass Me By. Now I'm sure most dedicated Beatles fans will love Now and Then, but it'll be interesting to hear what the public think of it. Now if truth be told, Free as a Bird received a lukewarm reception from the British public in 1995. Now, I remember being so excited about hearing it and recall sitting in my car listening to it being played on the radio for the first time. However, it was then played like every quarter of an hour on every radio station. And it's no surprise, everyone, including myself, got pretty burned out on it. Real Love, which many today consider to be a better single, only made number four in the UK charts in March 1996. With many fans resigned to the fact that Now and Then would never be finished, their hope was renewed in 2012, when in a documentary about Jeff Lynne, Paul lit up when he talked about the song and seemed determined to finish it. But there were three that we liked. Um, Free as a Bird, Real Love. And so those were the two that we did. And there was another one that we started working on, but George went off it. <sighs> Hell. 
rubbish this is. And it was like, no, George, this is John. It's still fucking rubbish, you know. Oh, okay then. <laughs> so that one, that one's still lingering around somewhere. I'm going to nick in with Jeff and do it, finish it one of these days. Then in June this year, Paul casually mentioned in a BBC interview that he'd just finished work on a song where AI had been used to extract John's voice from a demo. Although he didn't mention the song by name, most guessed it was now and then. Unfortunately, the news about the song was drowned out by hysterical and untrue claims that John's voice had been recreated by AI. But the reality was that Peter Jackson's sound team, the same who'd worked wonders with the dialogue on the Get Back film project, had applied the same process to the cassette recording and were able to separate the piano from the vocal, while at the same time preserve the clarity and integrity of John's original performance. And crucially, they used George's original 1995 electric and acoustic guitar parts. However, as well as redoing his bass part, Paul also added another guitar track, piano to match John's original, and, inspired by George, a slide guitar part. Ringo also redid his drums and joined Paul on backing vocals. In May this year, Paul oversaw a string arrangement at Capitol Studios in LA, which had been written by Giles Martin, also using the techniques perfected during the making of the Love Show and Album, Paul and Giles have also added backing vocals from the original Beatles recordings of Here, There and Everywhere, Eleanor Rigby and Because. The single is due for release on Thursday, November the 2nd, which is four days after this video is being released, so I haven't had the chance to hear it myself. It's poignantly coupled with their debut single, Love Me Do, on 45, 12-inch and cassette, although there's no CD single this time around. Now, having heard many fan-made versions of Now and Then on YouTube, I'm hoping that the official version will blow me away and that you shouldn't judge a record by its cover. Back in 1995, in its review of Free as a Bird, the Daily Telegraph said that, quote, while it is a strange thrill to hear them together again, the track is no classic and is unlikely to have made it onto any genuine Beatles album. Whether reviews of Now and Then will be the same, only time will tell. But like you, I can't wait to hear it and I'm expecting and hoping it will be an emotional experience. Although Now and Then is being marketed as the last Beatles song, we know that this isn't the end. There are still tracks locked away in the vaults we've yet to hear and those, coupled with the way technology is unlocking new ways to hear the songs we do know, will keep the Beatles' flame alive for many years to come. But what do you think about all this? Do let me and everyone else know in the comments. Now and Then is also to be included as part of the expanded editions of the Red and Blue albums, which of course we'll be looking at in great detail as soon as they're released on November the 10th. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you'll join me again next weekend when I'll be looking back at the events of 60 years ago, when the Beatles broke into the big time in the UK and went on their first overseas tour to Sweden. But that's all for this one, so I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.